Right, welcome to Charlie's vlog episode six. So a quick recap of what's to come today. So at the beginning of today's session, you're gonna see me starting to introduce a bit of stop with movement, which works towards being able to stop the dog later during hunting and during handling. I'm then gonna to start to put together some back retrieves with some lefts and some back retrieves with some rights. I then start doing some very basic straight sends, but as memory retrieves of multiples of two. So sending the dog in one direction, turning around, sending the dog in the other direction. Thank you. All over nice short distances. Everything I do in the early stages can be done within my garden. I don't need a lot of space. And in the last part of the video, I'm gonna be teaching the dog uh, to stop on the stop whistle whilst playing a fun game with a ball. Also teaching the dog to break out of that sit position with the hunt whistle. Anyway, hope you enjoy guys. Right everyone, so I am going to do a little bit of stop in amongst recall sit where I'm increasing the distance out. Um, so basically, I'm gonna be doing a sit, sit, a recall sit, and as I stop the dog, um, I'm gonna carry on moving backwards and that's to create a stop whilst there is movement either between me and the dog. So I'm gonna be calling the dog towards me, then making him sit, but carry on traveling backwards. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna have a go at that, like this. So we're gonna do a sit. So I'm gonna do a recall sit and then stop him, but carry on moving myself. Now I let go of the lead to do that, because obviously otherwise, well, you could do it with an extra long lead. Sometimes I do do that if I don't trust the dog. Come on, Charlie. So I'm gonna do that again. Sit first, travel, sit, sit, and then again. So you'll notice, see I wouldn't normally talk when I'm doing this because it can make him move. So normally I would recall, sit, and then carry on moving myself, little pause, and then I'd go back to him. So I'm just trying to get him to stop whilst I carry on moving. So I'm gonna do that again. Here we go, sit, Charlie, sit, and then I carry on moving backwards. I'm gonna go back to him. Now I don't move too quickly, because I don't wanna make him move, you see. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna come around, Charlie, Charlie. Sit, okay. Good boy. Well done, I can always come back, ah, ah. Okay, so he decided to move there. So it shows you that it's very easy for them to move and I don't want him to do something good and then him mess it up by me over praising him or talking to him too much. So I'll try one more time, sit. Normally be fine, but again, when I'm filming, I end up doing a lot more talking, which he's then not used to. Charlie, sit. I'm gonna call him up to me this time. I normally, when I'm training, I'm like, bomb, 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 then I'm done. But for filming, it's a little bit, you know, not as smooth as that. So one more time for me, Charlie. Good boy. So I, a lot of the time I prefer not to talk to a dog once I've sat them, because even the littlest bit of praise, Charlie sit, even the littlest bit of praise can move them off the spot. So that's recall sit with a traveling stop. And so later when you see me doing stops in the last video, that's how I got him doing this. I got him used to movement, but having to stop whilst I was moving. So it sort of bridges that gap. Come on. Right, so now I'm gonna do a similar thing to that. The only difference is I'm gonna be walking to heel and then I'm gonna do a stop, turn and carry on moving backwards. So it'll look a bit like this. You get a little lead. boy so he's better when I don't praise him afterwards and just softly use my body language I'll do that again here we go ah, ah. just being a monkey so sometimes I find Charlie sit by the way he's wet because I hosed him off first because it's so warm still by him being wet I just get a little bit more out of him um, 
I find that they're better when I say nothing, as I said before, as I'm going back towards them. Often I don't even look them in the eye as well. I tend to look around because that tends to make them move less. If I make direct eye contact with them, that's when they're most likely to make a mistake. So I'll do one more of those. Come on, Charlie, Charlie, come on. Come on. Good boy, good boy. One more. Show you line. Charlie, 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 Charlie. No lead this time. So I'm not going to look at him. Keep my head up. Nice and slow approach. I'm trying to get to him before he then gets back up again. So those are the two types of sit and stop I do. There's one other type that you'll see at the end of this video, which is me playing a bounce and ball game, which is the hump whistle and the stop. And those are the three ways I interject my sit, which is how I then get the dog sitting whilst it's hunting. Because it's, it's used to then stopping while something is going on. And that bridges that gap to that sit. Are you being a monkey, Charlie? You are. Well done. Good boy. Come on. Right, so today, here we are. We're going to do a little bit of back retrieving with some right-hand retrieves to start with. A lot of my work is done in a very small space at the beginning. Until I'm at a decent standard, I don't worry about increasing the amount of space. So you'll see here already how important this training lead is to have on because at any point the dog goes to make a wrong mistake, you can correct him. So we started off there with a back retrieve with our left hand and that's always turning the dog away from the retrieve that is out to the side. So if we've got a right hand retrieve out like we have here, we're doing a back retrieve with our left hand. You'll often see me doing a little recourse sit Sometimes it's to line up with the dog, but also to keep the dog's concentration on what it is that I want. So here I did a high stop and then dropped my hand to my hip and pushed right. Just starting here now to work on the delivery. So sometimes I'm gently making him sit up and hold the retrieve, and sometimes I'm still letting him jump up. I don't want to make it too formal too quickly, otherwise it can knock all the drive out of the dog especially when it's already quite a formal retrieve. So we've just put the right hand retrieve back out. We've done a little recall sit. Now I way put my hand through my hair there just to see if the dog would go on the merest bit of movement and he did. So I was able to stop him and then go again. So here we go, back retrieve with the left hand. So always turning away from the retrieve that's out to the side. In this case, it's a right handed retrieve. Again there, just gently working on that delivery. Once I've got him sat up in front of me, I'm rubbing him on the chest. Left hand lead, right hand retrieve, always taking the retrieve with the right hand. And my left hand always goes on the lead first. Little recall sit. Put the back retrieve back out again, high stop. Put my hands through my hair just to check whether the dog's going to move. Then pushing him nice and right handed there. So high stop, dropping the hand to the hip and then pushing right. Same thing here again, once again on the delivery. Right hand retrieve, left hand, uh, left hand lead. Put that right retrieve back out once again. So I'm just making sure, as I said, that he's paying attention for the command and not just thinking he can predict it. Right hand retrieve, sorry, back retrieve with the left hand, sorry. Again, just working on that delivery there. I'm not doing it all the time but I'm getting better and better at getting him gently to sit him up. Sometimes they come back with so much speed. If you just stand still, they either pile into you or go past you, which I obviously want to avoid. So we're going into a back retrieve now here with a left-handed retrieve. And so when we do the back retrieve now, we're going to be using our right hand, turning towards the wall to push him back. Little recall sit, back retrieve with the right hand, see the dog's turning towards the wall to go back. If at this stage you try to use your left hand to push the dog back when there's a left hand retrieve out, 99% of the time that dog is going to go left. That's a much, much harder retrieve to do. We will be doing that in the weeks to come though. So I'm going to put the back retrieve back out again. None of these are particularly far. Just teasing him, making sure he's paying attention there, dropping my hand to my hip and pushing out as if I'm pushing my hand along a table. I don't want to cut the bottom part of the handling maneuver out. Otherwise, later when you're at further distance, that can, can, can confuse the dog. Okay, so just a bit of heel work in between, lots and lots of bits of heel. The lead allows you to do that without the dog getting away with any little nasty habits. Left hand of retrieve back out, using my right hand once again to turn the dog towards the wall. That's away from the retrieve that's out on the left hand side. 
Just fumbled there slightly. Little rub on the chest again. Left hand lead, right hand retrieve. Back retrieve goes back out again. Left handed. Just dropping down there. As I said, I'm not making him sit on everyone, keeping some of them nice and fun. Left hand retrieve back out again. Little recall sit. Back retrieve one more time with that right hand. So at the moment, it's just back retrieves with either a left handed retrieve out or a right handed retrieve out. And whichever one I'm doing, I use the opposite hand to send the dog back. Little recall sit, often straightening up with the retrieve that's out to my side. Swapping hands, everything's nice, calm, slow, meaningful. And if the dog ever attempts to go at the wrong time, I'm able to stop the dog with the retrieve and then effectively reset the dog and start again. Little recall sit once again. Going to put this retrieve back out to the left hand side, always looking for that nine, nice 90 degree angle right hand and then I actually pushed with my left hand so sometimes I make the dog when it gets to a certain standard I try and get the dog to think it thinks it knows what I'm going to do and then smoothly I change onto the other hand because they will start to recognize the hand and they can start to predict rather than waiting to listen and that's why I do that along with sometimes scratching my head because I'm making the dog be patient and really pay attention to what it is that I'm going to ask it to do and not what it thinks I'm going to do. So nice stop with the uh, right hand, but pushing him back once again towards the wall. Still keeping some of the deliveries a bit fun. I will need to this up over the weeks to come. And eventually he'll come in and just sit up and present that retrieve nicely, which will be really, really neat once we've got there, but still just mixing and matching at the moment. So putting that right retrieve back out once again. I'm just trying to line him up here with that retrieve that's out to the left and then using my left hand to push out as if I'm going along a table out onto that retrieve. So we're going to start to do some two point basic memory retrieves. So I'm using the right angle of my garden here. I've put a retrieve out down the end of the garden. Nice little slow mo there. Dogs running out straight back. Encourage them up. We're going to put that one back out again and then I'm going to walk the heel to the corner that's behind me. So a little throw, turn into the dog, walk to the far corner, and then straighten up to send down the fence line. That one I'd already put out as well. So I was just teasing him there just to see if he's waiting for the actual command. See, again, not particularly long retrieves. This is more about the position of my hand, how I'm sending the dog. And it is two retrieves out, and obviously he's got to go for the right one. I'm going to turn into the dog. I generally always prefer to turn into the dog if I can. That means turning left rather than right. Sitting him up, eye contact. Nice push out with that arm, clear command, lovely slow-mo there. These are quite basic retrieves, but I'm building on the fact that there's two retrieves out and I'm using two separate corners. Soon I do need a bit more space in this, but at the moment for this basic drill work, so you've got a little bit of heel, you've got a bit of sit, you've got a bit of eye contact, you've got the dog registering the correct corner, straight out. They're not difficult retrieves once he gets out there but they are a basic memory retrieve which will build towards a more complicated blind and memory later on but again because i'm just doing all this retrieve work in the garden i should probably be using the garden regularly for another month or so and then i'll probably start progressing up to bigger spaces where it starts to get a little bit more difficult good eye contact nice straight send again i've probably said this before but I do longer sessions for camera than I actually do when I'm just training. I probably only do five to eight minutes when I'm actually training when I haven't got the camera out. So this is a lot of concentration for such a small puppet around four and a half months old. I'm not too worried about this fumbling. That will get better later on. He's still only got his little puppy teeth. So we're going to start to go in to some stop work with the hunt whistle. So basically all the time you can hear the hunt whistle, he is allowed to pick that dummy but as soon as i blow that stop whistle he must sit wherever he is and then release him out of that sat position with the hunt whistle so he's learning to recognize that hunt whistle means you can hunt or find or pick the retrieve all the time you're hearing that but the second i blow the stop whistle he must sit like that 
Later on, I'll be calling him away from it and then sending it back. This game has endless possibilities, but it's all based around the dog's concentration, stopping when he hears the stop. Eventually, I will teach him what I call spit training. This is when if he picks the retrieve and it's in his mouth, he must eject the retrieve. That will come not too long because he's pretty good at this already. There's quite a few stages that go through. This is the very beginning stage. But this is also good to do at the end of the session. It keeps things fun when the dog might be a bit tired. It's quite relaxed. See, all the time I'm blowing the hunt whistle, he's allowed to pick it. There's no steadiness unless I blow that stop whistle. I throw it in the air, I just try and keep it fun. At any point the dog hesitates, I do not try and stop the dog. So that was quite a good one there because I ended up being between the dog and the dummy, which makes it a lot easier to stop the dog. But as I said, the dog shows me any type of hesitation when I'm blowing that hunt whistle, I do not attempt to stop the dog. I don't actually teach this to novices because this can be really easy to mess up and you can really ruin your retrieve. But again, I've always said, I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. Quite a lot going on in there in that session. Quite a few different things that I'm starting to teach. I work at quite a quick speed. I can't always get everything on camera for you. Hopefully there'll be another episode next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like and tell me your thoughts. Anyway, happy training, guys.